Hi everybody, it's Ebony. Thank you so much for joining me here on Ebony's Creativity. Today, I am doing my second episode of Did I Dupe It? Where you tell me how I did recreating a luxury item that I love but think that I can DIY for a fraction of the cost. So these candle holders are very beautiful but very expensive and I would never pay $300 for them although they are really pretty. I think I can DIY them for much cheaper. So that's what I'll be doing in this video and if you want to see me go through the process of DIYing them then just stay tuned. Alright, so I'm just going to get started with the supply list. I have two packs of table tennis balls from Dollar Tree. One thing of ornaments. This one has one, two, three, four, five, seven ornaments. It's kind of an odd number, but that's what it has. That's what the label looks like. And I have some. My Lindo from Dollar Tree, never worked with this before, so we're gonna find out how it works together. And then I have two dowels from Michaels. They're color coded in Michaels, so this is the one with the orange tip. They're 79 cent each. You will also need four washers. Um, it's very important that at least two of them fit very snugly around the dowel. The other two can be a little bit smaller. They're gonna be used um, to balance the lid that we're gonna put on top but two of them must fit very snugly. Now I didn't include these in the previous clip because I already had all of these items at home and you probably do too, but just in case the additional items that will be required to complete this DIY are two candle or container lids or whatever you're gonna use um, that will hold your actual candle. You'll need two candles, one floral foam square, gray paint or textured spray paint, and a lighter. Then I have two takeout containers. If you don't have these, you can find something else to use, but this is what I'm going to use. And what I'm going to start by doing is cutting these, probably not in half, but about 75% of the way down, about right here. I just cut a slit going this way, and now I'm just working my way around. And these are not even the best scissors and they seem to be working just fine. So I'm kind of trying to flatten the part that I'm cutting as I'm going around. <clears throat> and that's stabbing my hand. So I'm going to cut that piece off and then just keep on cutting. Next, what I'm going to do is take my drill and make a hole in this container. Um, don't press too hard, make sure you press very gently. And my dowel did not fit through perfectly at first, so you see me here with this um, sharp edge just kind of playing around with the hole. You wanna be gentle because these things are not that strong. So just be gentle until it does go through. So now what I'm basically doing is just getting two and two and just rolling them out with my rolling pin. I have to make a big enough surface area to cover my container. So that's what I'm working on doing right now. Just rolling these out with my rolling pin from my last haul. So yeah, I'm just gonna be working this dough around this tin and when I get that put on then I will be right back. Right, so <clears throat> here are my two finished containers. The reason why I'm using this putty is because I wanted something that would make it thick and kind of more substantial than just the little plastic container. But if you have a sturdier container you could also just use this. They have spray paint that mimics concrete or like a textured look. You can use that spray paint. Um, I have gray paint and this is cheaper than that spray paint. So my method is to use this. Um, but that's just another option for you. If you don't want to do the putty step, you can go and buy the um, concrete looking 
spray paint and you can just paint your container. My containers are not very sturdy, so the more substantial I can make them, the better. So here are my two containers. Next, what I'm gonna be doing is cutting my dowels. I will be cutting one at 20 inches and one at 23 inches. So that's what you see me doing here, just measuring those out and cutting the two different lengths that I need. Okay, so what I'm gonna do to get my prep my um, ball is I'm going to use this lighter and just weaken one point on here. And you can see it's starting to pucker. And I'm really just kind of fluttering over it. It's not all the way on there. I'm going to take my scrap of, the, of my dowel and pierce it through like that. Then in the other end, you can see where the dowel wants to come out. So I'm just going to hold the lighter over that part too until it punches through. it's starting to weaken and you can just push it through and it stays so I'm gonna do that a few more times I think I need eight of those all together so I'm gonna do that with eight more well seven more balls and then I will be back to start the next step which is working on getting the hole in those. Um, so yeah, I'll just show you this one more time. There's a line on here, if you can see. Oh, my nail's on it. And so I'm making sure to use that line. It's kind of a focal point. And I'm just Setting the lighter on top of it. And then you don't want to force it. Like mine is not ready. The hole is not big enough yet. So, and the dial won't go through without me punk, without me flattening the ball. So I'm just gonna put my lighter back over that area and it's starting to melt. And expand a little bit. That looks like it's big enough for my dial to get through. Yeah, it is. So, on this other side, like I said, you can see where the dial wants to come out. Hold lighter over that area. And just kind of wait for the dial to push through. So yeah, I'm going to do that a few more times and then I will be back to work on getting holes in these ornaments. Okay, <clears throat> so next I'm gonna start working on my balls, um, on the ornament, and I'm going to start by removing this little gold piece. And basically I'm gonna do the same thing. The part that is protruding out, I'm gonna melt it off. And there's all kind of stuff flying around in the air. <laughs> So you can do this outside. I want it to melt down to at least the base of the circle. And I'm just gonna work on pushing this through. But I'm not gonna force it. 
So I need a little bit more heat to make this plastic pliable. And I'm using the blue part of the flame. I don't want to use the hottest part. Well, maybe the blue part is the hottest part. I don't know. I don't want to use the orange part. So I'm using, you can kind of see I'm holding it to the side so that I can get the blue part. Kind of just being patient with it and waiting for a chance to break through like that. This one is going to be a little bit tougher because you cannot see the dowel on the other end. So it's probably going to be better if I can just hold this upright this way and kind of bear down on it and then see where it's set and kind of just do a general area, a small area. I put it, I'm pressing down to see if the dial will pop out. And I do have a little slip for me. So I think I see where my dial is. So, as you can see, I'm able to force it through now. <clears throat> so, I'm gonna do three more of these because I need four of these, and then I'm gonna be back. So it's gonna take a little bit of patience, and even when you do the pink bonbons, you're gonna get that little piece that sticks out, but we can just trim that off with some scissors and there's our hole. So I'm gonna do that with these, as well as the ping pong balls. They're done, but they have that little puckering on the end too. So I'm gonna clean those up. And then when I come back, I will be on to the next step. All right, so, all, right, so all of my balls are done. And the end that puckers, the part that you push through it's gonna pucker a little bit. I did not cut my part that puckered off completely because I believe that that will help it stay on the rod better. So um, I got some of them as flat as I could, but I did not cut any of them off completely. And all the balls are here and all the ornaments are here. And now I just came up with an idea that I wanted to try. So um, if you watch my video where I redid, where I made over a thrift store dresser, you saw me using this stuff. I don't like it and I want to get rid of it basically. And it kind of looks like concrete. It's got a rough texture to it. So my idea is to put this over top of my clay form, which you can see I've done here. And I just try to get it as smooth as possible. It's kind of like frosting the cake, which is not my specialty, but this stuff is sandable. So when it dries, if it's not smooth, it will, um, you can sand it. But it did make this thing substantially more heavy. And it does feel and look a lot more like concrete than just the regular clay or dough or whatever they call this stuff. So I'll show you what I did to do that. This stuff is very thick and it's coming out of a small hole. So I'll just show you how I got started. I got a butter knife here, plastic knife, and I just started basically just like frosting the cake, except this is not 
it's not sticking as well as cake frosting does, but it's still pretty good. I like the way that those feel now, much more, they're much heavier, much more substantial. Hopefully that will make me have a better final product. So what I'm gonna do now is give some of this stuff time to dry. It's already starting to dry, it feels good. All right, so now we are at the point of assembly and spray painting. And what I'm gonna do first is uh, my taller rod and I have my pattern written down um, I don't know if you can see it, but I wrote it on that newspaper. Um, and I'm just putting the balls on the dowel based off the pattern, how they are on the one that I, on the um, product that I am duping. So that's what you see me doing here, just arranging my um, tennis table balls and my ornaments on the dowels in the order that they are on the original photo. So now I'm at the point of spray painting and you can just see me spray painting my two washers, my two dowels with my balls and ornaments, and my two lids. And a smarter idea than what you currently see me doing is for you to stand them up in the uh, remainder of the modeling dough. If you just stand them up in the container, um, you can get all sides without having to spray one side and waiting for it to dry and then flip it over. And also make sure you leave space at the bottom um, so, that, uh, so that there will be enough space to fit inside your base piece. And now I'm just painting the bases. Um, this is pretty straightforward. So just do a couple coats over the bases and that should be good enough. All right, so now I'm here and I have all of my pieces. I have my base pieces and I have my two sticks with my um, balls on them. And they've been spray painted and everything is dry. They're looking good. Now the only part that we have left to do is assembly. So I have my two washers here and I also have two more smaller um washers here's the part the ones that i painted and the other one is a little bit smaller as you can see and its job is going to be to sit on top of here just to give more surface area for the um for the top the lid to sit on so now i'm just going to assemble i have my glue gun here i'm going to go ahead and stick the first the washer, the bigger washer. Then I'm gonna stick my stick in the hole and I'm gonna just glue that right there like that. So I'm gonna put some glue up underneath the washer. Making sure that it's spinning up nice and straight. And that's that one. Do the same thing on the other one. All right, so we are pretty close to the finish line. In this clip here, what you see me doing is just sanding down the top of the dowel, um, gluing on the extra washer that I had, and then just um, adhering the lid onto the top of the washer and I'm just using hot glue to do that 
all right guys so here is the finished product let me know what you think in the comments below did i dupe it am i close enough to the original for you i think it turned out really well and for less than ten dollars um it's really close to the 300 hundred dollar original so if you have anything you want me to attempt to dupe leave me a comment or with the link or dm me on my socials and one note that I do need to make is that I did add a piece of floral foam beneath my basis. Just stick the dial in it and it's good to go. Um, if you buy the one from Dollar Tree, you'll have to cut it in half, but that's pretty self-explanatory. So yeah, thank you for watching my video. Subscribe, hit like, and I will see you in my next one.